Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mike here. So when I was at the Space Access Conference, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jeff Greeson of x Aerospace and talk about their plans for the Link spacecraft, as well as what kind of steps they're taking in order to get all the way to orbit eventually. So here is that interview that I was able to get with Jeff Greeson. Enjoy. Right, well, thank you for uh, sitting down with me, Jeff. Sure. Um, tell me, uh, how did you first get started uh, working in space systems? Well, I had always been fascinated as a kid by space and, and what we could do in space when it was really open as a frontier. And I got frustrated with the lack of progress. And I thought maybe if I got into the field, I could find some team to add my efforts to and maybe I could make a difference. And that wound up being Rotary Rocket. And after a relatively short time there, the company ran into difficulties and my team and I all got laid off together. And I basically was in a situation where they came to me and said, well, we're, we're not ready to quit, so what are you going to do now? And so I sat down and worked out with them you know, a business plan that I thought had a credible chance of working, and we're still pursuing that 11 years later. <laughs> It's really uh, uh, driven more by uh, uh, safety and reliability considerations than anything else. Uh, you, we, we had worked at Rotary on vertical takeoff and landing systems, and there's nothing wrong with them technically. You can certainly make them work. But uh, I found it very difficult to get over the problem of if something goes wrong with the vehicle shortly after takeoff, how do you save the vehicle? Uh, you can certainly find ways to save the crew, but in a reusable space transportation system, you want both the crew and the vehicle back, ready to do the next one. Uh, and we found, and we looked at it more closely, that some of the conventional wisdom about uh, horizontal takeoff vehicles, which is that the wings are heavy, um, is simply not true. The, particularly for a suborbital vehicle, it turns out that the amount of, of vehicle area, you know, wing area or body or whatever it is that you need to get yourself slowed down or turned coming back into the atmosphere is the same amount of wings stressed the same amount that you need to take off from a runway. So it's not costing you anything to get all the safety advantages of a wing uh, and it has all the safety advantages so why not? Um, really the price that you pay is that it does make uh, the aerodynamic design of the vehicle more complicated than just doing a cylinder uh, and that certainly does bring uh, drawbacks with it but you know sometimes doing it you know it's sometimes you have to face up to certain things engineering is about picking your problems and that was a problem we thought was worth picking well that was actually part of the original business plan of the company oh. uh, the, the, the key to um, anything in rocketry at this point is, is markets, not technology. Uh, we have the technologies that we need to build cost-effective space transportation systems. Um, of course, there's always more things that you'd like to have, but we've got enough. But what drives it is markets. So uh, the, the business plan that for the export really closed when we said, okay, we, we want to build an orbital system someday, we're not technically ready to do that. We're not financially ready to do that. So we're going to have to build something suborbital um, as a test vehicle, if nothing else. And since we aren't um, rich people, we're going to need that vehicle to make money on its own. So it has to have markets. And the three markets that we identified were the same three that we pursue today. People, payloads, and nanosatellite launches. Um, so scientific uh, payloads were part of our business model from the beginning. It's interesting for me to watch the, the, the ebbs and flows of fashion as you know people seize on on people as the only market of interest, other people seize on payloads as the only market of interest, and pretty soon I suspect people will seize on nano satellites as the only market of interest. But it was important to us that they all that the, that we when we realized with one properly designed vehicle we could serve all of those markets, um, it gave the business a certain robustness because they're all some, they all have some uncertainties. They all rise and fall differently with the trends in the economy and with what governments are doing. And having those multiple markets that we can all service with the same vehicle is what gave us the confidence that 
come what may, it would always have enough market to make money. Uh, well, you know, the first two uh, have been our first two vehicles, the, uh, the Easy Rocket and the X-Racer. Uh, and with those, we've demonstrated that we can do both the low cost of operations, low maintenance man hours per flight, that we need to do something cost effective and that we can do the tempo of operations that we need to get enough flights off per day that the, the asset is, is producing enough flights during its life to, to make good profit. Uh, so the links, you know, is the next step to show that we can do carry on all those attributes all the way into the space environment uh, and also to, to get under our belt the design and, and flight test program for a new aerodynamic shape. Uh, and then the orbital system will uh, most likely be two stages uh, and they will each return to the runway uh, at the launch site ready to be reintegrated. Uh, cool. And you know, the propulsion technology, elements of the controls, elements of the aerodynamic design will all have heritage from the Lynx, although of course we continue to learn lessons and, and we will, just as we do with every other system, take those lessons learned and, and incorporate them into a new design. So um, what kind of ballpark figure are you, are you giving for when you m might start test flights of the Lynx? I don't. <laughs> uh, Probably for the best. It'll be done when it's done. <laughs> Great. Well thank you very much Jeff. I really enjoyed this. Thank you.